ago when my eyes became bad because of uh, retina disease, I lost my central vision. I was devastated. I don't know what to do in my life and I started learning Buddhism. I didn't know anything about Buddhism but I came to this monk explaining this book, Liao Fan's Four Lessons. And this is the book that transformed my life. Today I'm going to share with you about this book and hopefully you will come to realization and change your life for the better. There are four chapters to this book. The first chapter is the first lesson, learning to change destiny. And the second chapter is how to reform, how to change our ways. The third chapter is how to cultivate all the goodness to maintain your prosperity and goodness. And the fourth is to develop the virtue of humility. Be humble. Humble will make you prosperous and keep what you have. Today we are going to just talk about the first lesson and then the next week we will talk about the, the second, the third, and the fourth. So the first lesson is learning to change destiny. There is this person named Lao Fan. When he was young, he lost his dad because his dad got sick and passed away. So he lived with his mom. His mom wanted him to study medicine. So he didn't take the scholarly route. He, he didn't want to be a government official. He just wanted to do herbal medicine. One day he was on the street trying to find herbal medicine. He met this man, Mr. Kong. He's a psychic. He knows what's going on. And Mr. Kong said, you know, you are supposed to be a government official. How come you are not studying? Uh, he said, oh, because my mom wanted me to be an herbal doctor to heal people. Lao Fan took this man back to his house to see his mom. And his mom asked Mr. Kong, do you know whatever happened to him when he was little? This man told them exactly you know, what happened to him when his dad passed away. He knew everything you know, by calculation. So like, oh, wow, you're great. Can you predict his future? What is his future going to be? Mr. Kong said, um, he will place 14 next year on the county exam and he will place 71st on the provincial test and then he will place the 9th next year. And then he said, you're going to have no children and you will die when you are 53 on August 14th between 1 to 3 a.m. So he knew the exact time of his death, okay? So everything was calculated. And then next year, he took the exam. It was exactly what Mr. Kong said. <laughs> he placed exactly. And he knew, oh my God, there is destiny. It is determined. So from 17 to 37, he just followed his destiny. He didn't do anything. He didn't try hard. He didn't do anything. He just go on with life. When he was 37, before he went to Nanjing to study at a university, he went to see a Zen master. And when he was there, he meditated with the Zen master for three days and three nights. And the Zen master was like, wow, you know, normal people, they have so much wandering thoughts, they cannot sit here still, that's why they cannot be a sage. How come you have no wandering thoughts? And he said to the Zen master, because my life is already destined. What is there to think about? Okay? There's nothing to think about. I have no wondering thoughts. And the Zen master started laughing. He said, oh, I thought you were someone with great capability. You are just a normal person bound by fate. Then Liao Fan's like, do you mean fate can be changed? And then the Zen master's like, we can recreate our own destiny and seek good fortune. Anyone can recreate whatever was destined. We have destined life because what we did in our prior lives, all the good deeds and bad deeds, whatever happened to you today is no coincidence. Who you marry, you know, which family and what your job is, and even like a cup of water and bowl of rice, everything you have today is based on what you did before. Okay, that's why it's, we can calculate your destiny. It is fixed, but it has variables. What's the variable? what you do today, your thoughts. You know, if you're good and virtuous, you can totally change whatever is distant. The master explained this 
to Lao Fan. He's like, oh really? I can understand if I change my way and I have good integrity, I have virtue, that I can control. But how can I control if I have good position, if I have good family and the outside field, how can I control that? The master told him, all the fields of merit are within one's own heart. If one seeks from the true mind within, one can be in touch with all that one wishes for. All the fields of merit. Our heart is like a field of merit, like a farmer. Whatever you want to cultivate, you can have a harvest. You can only go from within one's heart. You don't go try to compete with others and be greedy and try to change all the circumstances. You want to live a good life from within. Change your own way and be virtuous and have good integrity and do all that is good. Then you will reap what you sow. If one seeks from the true mind, basically your true self nature within, then you will be in touch with everything that you wish for. If you want a son, if you want a promotion, if you want to be a millionaire, if you want to be proud, you can do anything if you go inside. If you just go inside and change your thoughts, then you can change your entire life. And he said, to permanently accord with the mind of heaven and to seek our own great good fortune. What you do is very easy. You want to be permanently accord with the mind of heaven. What is the mind of heaven? We say the universal power. The universe is full of positivity and virtue and goodness. Okay, you want to be in line with the universe. So you want to do all that is good. Get rid of all your bad ways and do all that is good. Then you will be able to change your destiny. So the master asked him, do you think you deserve to be an imperial appointed government official? Do you think you deserve it? But Lao Fan is very honest. He thought about it and he said, Oh no, no, I'm very impatient and I'm very narrow-minded. I always boast about myself and put other people down. So I don't deserve to be a leader or to be a government official. Uh, the master asked, Do you think you deserve to have a lot of children? And he's like, uh, No, I don't think I do because I am obsessed with cleaning this, so when the water is too clean and harbors no fish, you know, I'm very quick tempered and I'm, I'm very selfish. You know, I only think about myself and my own reputation. I don't care about others. I don't take care of myself, so I stay up late every night and I drink a lot of alcohol and I talk a lot. So I don't save my energy, so I don't think I should have children. He was able to reflect on his own fault. And the master said, since you know that you have all these faults, if you change it, then you will change your destiny. So what happened was after that day, he totally realized, oh, I can change my destiny. So on that day on, he vowed he would do 3,000 good deeds. So every day he has book and then he write down all the good deeds and all the bad deeds. The first 3,000 deeds he wants to pass the government exam. The next year when he did the exam, he did more than whatever Mr. Kong calculated. It was much more. He passed it with flying color. But that took him more than 10 years to complete the 3,000 good deeds. Then he decided, oh, I'm going to do another 3,000 good deeds. I'm going to wish for a son. And that only took him four years. And his wife got pregnant. And he really got a son. And he said, oh, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to vow to become a government official and pass the highest level of government exam. After three years, he really did and became a mayor of a county and they said oh but I'm not done with my 10,000 good deeds because now I live in the government residence there's not much good deeds to do because I don't see a lot of people one night in the dream a heavenly being came and told him you know your 10,000 good deed is already complete because we reduce the taxes by half for all the farmers so that is worth 10,000 good deeds it's already done he woke up and knew that the 10,000 good deeds were already done. So his life is completely changed when he started doing good. He lived to be 74 instead of 53 and he had a son and he became a mayor. So he had a very good life. He wrote this book to his son telling him life can be changed and destiny can be changed. Because I read this book 
that's when I decided to change my ways. And it doesn't matter if I go blind or not, I'm going to be good and change my life. That was 16 years ago. And now I'm still OK. I can still see. And life is perfect as what I always wanted. So I know it really works. So this book is 500 years ago, but it still applies to us today because the universal truth is still the same. This is the first chapter. So next time, we're going to talk about how do we reform to change our life for the better and change our destiny. This is the class for today. Thank you for listening. Um,